In this video, I want to talk about pyroluria. It's one of the most interesting and controversial biochemical disorders out there, but most people have never heard of it. So we will talk about what pyroluria is, its causes, and how to recover from it. At the end of the video, I will also talk about the question of whether pyroluria is even a real diagnosable disease. Okay, first things first, what exactly is pyroluria? If you've never heard of it before, what are we talking about here? Pyroluria, which is sometimes also called pyrol disorder or ma factor, in Europe I've also seen the term HPU, refers to a biochemical disorder that increases your levels of pyrroles in the urine. These pyrroles, which are technically called hydroxyhemopyrrolin 21 or HPL, are a natural byproduct of hemoglobin production. Remember that hemoglobin is the protein that keeps iron in the red blood cells. It's basically what makes blood red. Now, everyone has these pyrroles in their body, but people with pyroluria tend to have abnormally high levels of them, especially in situations of stress. Now, the problem with these pyrroles is that they're somewhat toxic. They tend to create oxidative stress in the body and inflammate tissue. That's why they need to be eliminated. But in the process of being eliminated from the body, you will pee them out basically, pyrroles will bind to nutrients, essential nutrients such as zinc and vitamin B6, which they then pull out of the body. That means in the long term, people who always have high levels of these pyrroles always need to eliminate them, which constantly depletes them of these nutrients. Like I said before, zinc and vitamin B6 are the primary nutrients that you will be deficient in. But there are also secondary minerals that sometimes get pulled out along the way. These can be manganese, magnesium, and others. So what you have in this situation is a double whammy, where the pyrroles themselves are somewhat toxic and increase oxidative stress, and on their way out, they also create nutrient deficiencies. This can lead to a whole range of symptoms. Most of them come from the nutrient deficiencies. For example, a vitamin B6 deficiency can impair things like your energy and mental clarity. So symptoms can include fatigue, anxiety, and low stress tolerance. Zinc is very important for the immune system and for your hormonal balance. So if you are deficient in zinc, primary symptoms can be that you're prone to infection, that your hormones are somewhat off. For example, in men, this can lead to estrogen dominance, which I had. And also, like I said before, the oxidative stress will increase your inflammation markers across the board. To be honest, it's kind of difficult to pinpoint the exact symptoms of pyroluria because they're related to your energy metabolism and to your nutrient intake. So it can really affect a lot of metabolic functions in your body. And you will have a hard time finding that one specific symptom that is specific to pyroluria. Now, what about its causes? Where do you get this condition from? Well, there's definitely a genetic component because pyroluria tends to run in families, especially in families with a history of alcoholics and mental illnesses. Here you can see an overview of the occurrence of pyroluria within patients with specific disorders. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't find a source for these statistics, but I believe they're from the Walsh Institute because they do most of the research on pyroluria. More on this later. Next to the genetic component that is definitely a part of pyroluria, there also seem to be lifestyle factors involved. I mentioned stress before because this tends to elevate pyro levels in people with pyroluria, but a bad diet and poor lifestyle choices in general also seem to worsen the condition. So reducing stress and managing a proper and healthy lifestyle really is a big part of managing pyroluria. Okay, so if you suspect that you might have pyroluria, how would you go about diagnosing this condition? The most reliable test is a urine test where the levels of pyrroles that you excrete are measured. So if these levels are then elevated above the normal threshold, you would be diagnosed with pyroluria. I myself have done two tests, one with the Walsh Institute and one with the Kayak Institute in the Netherlands. So it kind of depends on where you live. If you live in the US, I would go with the Walsh Institute. If you live in Europe, I would go with Kayak. 
In both cases, you send in your urine sample, they will then analyze it and give you the results a week to two later. But what do you do afterwards? Let's assume you've been diagnosed with pyroluria and then you're probably overwhelmed by all the information online on how to treat it correctly. Now, usually I recommend that you go see a practitioner experienced with this condition who will then help you fix it and improve. The problem is that most practitioners who work with patients who have pyroluria usually only recommend a few nutrients. These are zinc, vitamin B6 in the form of P5P, which is the metabolic active component of vitamin B6, and sometimes other nutrients that you might also be deficient in. So what they're really trying to fix is your nutrient deficiencies. Now, for some people, this works very well. I know that the Walsh Institute cites pyroluria as their most beneficial diagnosis simply because they're super happy when someone has pyroluria because they have so many patients that recover from it quickly. I wasn't one of them. My when my diagnosis came, I instantly started taking zinc and B6 and it only made me feel worse. And as I've gone along my health journey, I actually encountered a lot of people with the same problem. For them, the normal pyroluria protocol simply doesn't work. That's what I don't like about it, because the, it seems like a simple fix. Simply take a few nutrients and then you're good to go. But for many people, that's usually not the case and it doesn't help them. Why? Well, one, because you usually don't just have pyroluria. You often also have other problems, for example, copper toxicity, which I talk about more in my video on copper toxicity. And also, these nutrient deficiencies accumulate over time. So if someone finds out they have pyroluria when they're 15, it's usually easy to fix. But when someone finds out that they have pyroluria with 30 or even 40, then these nutrient deficiencies have accumulated and gotten worse over time. And they've probably also led to other metabolic dysfunctions along the way. This was my problem and why taking zinc and vitamin B6 didn't work for me. Also, what many practitioners do is that they rely on blood tests to measure your nutrient deficiencies. And blood tests are notoriously bad for spotting and fixing nutrient deficiencies. That's just the reality of it. I no longer recommend them and instead recommend a hair analysis. I also have a video on how to do that correctly. So for anyone who stumbled on pyroluria, got diagnosed with it, and then thought it was the solution to all their problems, only to later find out that the pyroluria protocol doesn't work for them, here's what I recommend to you. Instead of working with someone who relies on blood tests and only prescribes zinc, vitamin B6, and maybe one or two other nutrients that they might have found you deficient in in your blood, go with a hair analysis and then start a program based on that hair analysis with a practitioner that is experienced in this kind of stuff. This is really important because when you get a hair analysis, the results can be somewhat confusing and you can't just supplement those values that are low and avoid those values or those nutrients that are high. It doesn't work like that. Again, I explain all of this in my video on how to get a hair analysis correctly. No longer focusing on pyroluria and instead on your whole body and bringing your minerals and nutrients back into balance was my personal breakthrough and it really helped me get over all these conditions. My biggest mistake was really that in the beginning I thought pyroluria was my main problem because it was the first metabolic disorder that I came across in my online research. Only later did I find out that for many people this diagnosis doesn't work. Which takes me to the last part of this video, which is the question of is pyroluria a real diagnosable condition? So first things first, from a medical standpoint, it's not an accepted illness. And most doctors have never heard of it before. So when you go to your normal doctor and tell them you have pyroluria, they probably don't know what to do with you. They might Google it and then say that, yeah, I didn't learn about it in medical school. I can't help you. Now, the problem isn't that pyroluria isn't real. These HPL molecules can be measured in the urine and they are accepted within medicine. The problem is just that studies weren't able to tie them directly to mental illness and the other metabolic problems that I talked about before. So if you cannot establish a direct correlation between high pyro levels and the problems we talked about before, all these symptoms, 
then from a medical standpoint, you cannot say that this is an established diagnosis. That said, I personally believe it is legit and you should care about it because I have seen quite a few people have their lives changed after the diagnosis. So it definitely helps a few people and the normal pyroluria protocol of zinc, vitamin B6 and a few other nutrients can work. So the idea of completely ignoring pyroluria just based on the fact that we don't have any conclusive studies proving that it exists is a bad idea in my opinion because you can definitely help people with a very easy fix. Now, like I said before, for everyone else that isn't helped with the normal pyroluria protocol, go get a hair analysis instead, work with an experienced practitioner and focus on that. It will help you more because like I said before, usually what happens is that you don't just have pyroluria, but you might also have other imbalances that cannot just be fixed or cannot be seen in a normal blood test. Okay, to wrap up this video, I hope my explanation helped you understand everything a little better. I really tried to give you an unbiased view of this condition, both from a medical standpoint, as well as my personal background as a nutritionist. I would love to hear from you if you have experience with pyroluria, so feel free to share your own story.